Okay, it's open. Uh, there are four components to this. The receiver. I've taken the um, faux penis out because I don't know what prolonged contact with Vaseline will do to the material inside. And there is someone I know who might be interested in this. The uh, pneumatic box, the control box, and the power unit. That's what I'm going to call it. I don't know what they call it. So, in order of simplicity, receiver you've seen, control box, yep, not a lot to it. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Three wires, I expect to only two to an on-off switch, and three to the uh, potentiometer there. So there. That is not what I was expecting. I was thinking maybe power, ground, signal, and the knob position. So a power ground, power status and the knob position, but nope. More wires than strictly needed. I don't know if that's because they're doing something fancy or I do have actually have a pretty good theory, which I will come to in a moment. The pneumatics. Now note this is the only place where the logo is visible. And according to their website, this is uh, deliberate. I know people might want this to not be obviously a sex toy. So they don't stick their logo everywhere and the mysterious black box is actually designed to be a mysterious black box. You can't really see it very clearly. Let me bring it close to the light. Down the bottom there. One in that corner. One in that corner. Those are one-way valves in different directions. So tube comes in, T-piece, one branch to each of the push buttons which are open when pressed and from there each one goes to the valve so fairly simple design this is where the interesting stuff happens right. there are three major components within this the electrics, the mechanics and the motor if I get a close up of this label you should be able to yeah that's not working so I shall have to read it to you it is a Bodine Electric Company gear motor, so integrated gearbox and motor. Type 24A4BEPM3F, volts 90, hertz DC, FF, whatever that means, uh, 1.0, amps 0.75, HP. 116. Now this is Americans, they don't like proper units and gave it in horsepower rather than watts. So I assume that's what it is. That comes to about 50 watts which looks about right. And uh, there, that is enough to scare me. And the ratio on the gearbox 15 to 1, 266 RPM and oh, I can't read it. Can't read it. Um, 6.5 Ibin Chalk uh, pound inches. America, they use, pro use proper units. That's a pound inch. Uh, Newtometers, people. Why is it the, the only, well, one of two countries in the world that cannot use the metric system? Right. Gearbox leads to. Uh, so. Yes, you can. Adjust the stroke length at the factory by changing which hole that's screwed into. It's currently in the shortest length, so people more adventurous than I might well open this up and put it on the longer stroke length. And that hooks up to that chamber. So, um, if I can get the power hooked up again. And the control cable. Well, I've got a camera, you don't expect a proper studio from me, do you? Yeah. So what, if I get 100,000 views on this, I'll get myself a proper work table and a tripod for the camera so it's not waving around. There we go. That's how it works. See, this is a... Apart from the ports at the air, the accessible ports, this chamber is sealed. Very uh, well constructed. That feels solid. Material is aged well. Hmm. 
once again I repeat not sticking it in there uh, I've had this control board out and examined it very closely and I cannot figure out how the thing works it's got your standard uh, voltage protection stuff on there two independent power supplies as far as I can tell one for the control electronics and one for the motor and this S1 according to the labels read that 120 volts 240 volts now I thought maybe there was actually a way to modify this to run without the transformer but having followed lots of PCB traces I don't think you can because all the controller isn't voltage switchable rather it's a common PCB that can be used in 120 or 240 volt versions with different components fitted and it also depends on the motor which is different if you were to need to change this to 240 volts it would need a different motor I don't know how the motor's driven I'm guessing PWM maybe it's a DC motor however I am going to find out because uh, motor comes off it's the AC neutral no motor negative where's motor positive hmm. I don't recognize the chip there's a bit of like a pick in there okay I will find the motor negative and hook up my scope and see what's going on with it Right, of course it is actually colour coded, red ones for motor, green ones for power. I also got a bit of a nasty shock off this thing because I forgot to disconnect it from the mains. One uh, nice thing about having a transformer hooked up, that is an isolating transformer, so I haven't got to worry about forming a ground loop and blowing my scope. So let's take a look. Ah. Okay, sockets and lights. I've blown a trip the RCD. Oh, don't know quite what happened there. This, uh. Hmm. Okay, let's try again. Connect scope ground to motor negative, like so. Ah. I don't know what it is. I'm guessing that. Uh... No, that can't be in a big enough. Difference. What is going on? I reckon that for some reason, motor negative is actually connected to ground, and we've got ground continuity on that transformer, and not circuit ground, proper earth ground. But that would require the transformer be isolated, so the motor be isolated, and that little transformer sure not powerful enough for that. Okay, I shall go restore power. Okay, appropriate modifications have been made. This should keep the electrons captive, so I can actually get what I wanted and find out how this motor drive works uh, there's nothing on this circuit board that says Venus 2000 I think it's actually a standard uh, component from Quantum Controls Inc so it's just your generic motor controller board right here goes oh come on how are they doing that I mean, it's not overcurrent because it's tripping the RCD, well, not the breaker. So it can't be shorting live and neutral, and the earth is disconnected. Uh, it's a good thing all my computers are on UPS. Okay, so that bad idea. Maybe if I try hooking this up to the other side of the motor instead. Like that. And you go. Uh. Okay. 
today we shall not be learning what kind of power that motor's getting. Let's just assume it's some kind of it's either a convert to DC and PWM or run it off halfway before rectified AC with a waveform chopper. Could be either way, but clearly we're not gonna find out. But, um, I'm going to reassemble this thing, put it back in storage. If you ever want to get one apart yourself, it all comes off the part fairly easily. Don't take the screws on the bottom off, they only hold the feet in. You want the hex screws, two on each side. Mechanism is fairly easy to understand. So, I think that's everything. All reassembled, and you'll note I am not dead despite that shock. Uh, rookie mistake that I just got so distracted trying to get a decent contact on those motor lines. So it was only in one arm. I test it still works, and this can go back into storage. I hope this has been an interesting teardown, and certainly of an unusual item. And I think that's everything. Time to tidy things up.